this week on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener podcast. Join Holly to talk about being more self-sufficient on your own land. Our garden tip of the week, our vegetable of the week. We're always prepping for big and small disasters as well as reusing and repurposing. Our special guest this week, he is the host of todolisthome.com, Tony Teolis. The link will be in the show notes live at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time as well as on BePreparedRadio.com and downloadable from iTunes. Coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, we'll be harvesting some beets. And later on, we'll make some handy, cool kid tools out of some reusable items you already have in your house. All that and a whole lot more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. DollarSeed.com. What could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Rain Saucer have partnered together. For more information on how you can purchase your own rain saucer, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. And on the right-hand side of the page, click on Rain Saucer Information. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. Well, we're in the beet patch today, and we're going to harvest what's ready. And we're just going to clean the whole beet patch out and we're going to replant beets for our fall harvest. Now these are Detroit red beets and some of them are, are bigger than others but we're going to go ahead and harvest them anyway just so I can get more beets in the ground. So I got my tray here so we can just put them in there for easy transportation. Let's see here. And if they're really small like that I'm just going to toss it in, uh, in the compost bin Just give it a good pull there. That's, that's a smaller beet, but it'll be fine for eating or for pickling. So another thing you can do with your beets, uh, even though they're small, we're going to pickle them, we can eat them. The tops of the beets are actually edible. Now you don't probably want to use a whole salad of just beet greens, but you can uh, pull them off the stem and eat them just like that and they're edible. And it's another way of getting your greens uh, for your meal. And so we've got some big beets, some small beets, and you can also just take the beet tops and put them in a compost bin, but they're edible, so you might as well uh, try to eat them. Now in this row here, I've got some golden beets that um, are smaller bulb size, and I'm just taking my fingers and rolling around the top that's a decent size one. I'm going to pull that one. And we'll leave those just to get a little more growth out of them because I can plant around them as we uh, plant our second planting of beets. Alright. Decent size. Most of these are about golf ball size. Obviously, you know, the ideal beet would be about the size of a, a baseball or tennis ball, but you can only get what you can get. So. I'm not too disappointed. I'm happy we got something to uh, harvest here. So, 
That's a little bit bigger. That's a nicer beet. Now we're getting closer to what uh, I'm a little more pleased with. Uh, that's a nice one there. I got nice long roots. And now I benefit the length of the root here. All of this has been double dug. And if you're unfamiliar about double digging, we'll have a link in the show notes for our extra that we did on double digging and the benefits that double digging can provide your vegetables with a six inch root on your beet. Uh, you don't get that in just regular soil. So I contribute that to double digging. Uh, let's see, here's a nice golden beet. That's a little bit bigger than a golf ball. That's nice. I'm going to uh, pull that one. That's a good one. Oh, here's a good, here's a nice one. There's that's what I'd like to see. Every every beat beat. That's the smallest of the big beats that I'd like to see. But again, you get what you get. So I'm going to uh, finish harvesting these here. Okay. We didn't do too bad. Um, we got a couple of cucumbers from our cucumber up. Uh, vines over there that was hiding, so I went ahead and harvest those. I mean, you're not talking terrible beets. I have seen worse, but I've seen better, but I'm, I'm pleased with anything that I can grow in my garden to uh, provide food for myself. So we're gonna take, and uh, as you see here, some of these golden beets that we've left. That one's a little smaller. That one's a little small. Here is, I believe, some form of a walnut tree that I'm going to leave because we will Dig that up, put that in a pot, and transplant that to somewhere more beneficial than in the garden. So I'm gonna take and we're gonna till this up with the hoe and run the rake through it to get the weeds out of it. And we're gonna plant some more uh, beets there for fall harvest and we'll get them watered in. So by this time of year, you probably have a lot of zucchini coming out of your garden. And if you're anything like everybody else, you're probably sick of making banana bread or zucchini bread, um, even zucchini relish, what have you. So here's another use that you can use for the zucchini. We're going to make um, zucchini chips. So what you want to do with your zucchini is you want to just simply cut the ends off. It's pretty simple. And then you can slice it if you'd like very thin, but that doesn't always work for me. So we have one of these handy mandolin slicers which I'm going to use here to slice it. You want to make it about, about the thickness of a quarter. And while you're slicing it and getting your zucchini prepped, you want to preheat your oven to 225 degrees. And I just want to let you know these do take about an hour and a half to two hours, somewhere in there, to bake. So this is not um, something that you can do quickly. If you're in a hurry or something, you definitely want to allow yourself the time okay so we have more than enough here you can um, set that aside for another batch or some other use and basically all you're going to do is you're going to take a cookie sheet just like that and you're going to lay, lay your zucchini out flat just pretty simply like this and you want to if you have some tin foil or parchment paper or one of these handy things you would definitely want to use that. So we're just going to lay them out. Okay so now we've got those laid out nice and flat and then you want to take some cooking oil spray real quick and just give them a quick little shot. Then you want to use some seasoning. You can use seasoned salt. I don't really like seasoned salt, so I'm going to use a mixture of chili pepper and garlic powder, half and half, and just uh, sprinkle them pretty lightly because they do shrink up quite a bit, so you don't want to over season them or overpower them. Okay, and of course, if you have you know, more cookie sheets, you can do more and just, you know, get them in the oven. But we're just gonna get these in the oven right now. And um, they bake for, you want to bake them for 30 minutes, rotate the trays, and then bake for another 30 to 50 minutes. But they're gonna shrub up and turn nice and crisp and you're gonna see that after we're done baking them.
So now that zucchini is done, and as you can see, it shrunk up quite a bit, and actually ours did get a little bit um, overcooked, but that's okay. They don't taste burnt and they don't smell burnt. They're just a little brown, but that's okay. And But you do want them to be dry. So as you can see here, um, they're nice and dry and crisp, and you just can break them, you know, and they're basically like chips. So you can try different seasonings. If you want to use seasoned salt, go ahead. Maybe you have like a seasoning you use on ribs or something that would probably taste good. Maybe give them a barbecue flavor. The chili powder and the garlic taste really delicious as well. So go ahead, give them a try and uh, enjoy a different use for your zucchini. There's many different tools in the home that you can make for your kids or even yourself or grandkids that they can start participating in the garden activity. Even though we're getting later in fall, these are still uh, neat tools that you can make, such as a little shovel out of a milk crate that works real good for potting soil. Or if the kids have a sandbox in the backyard, it's also a great tool for them to play with. And I'm going to show you how you construct construct one version of this. There's many different kinds going around Facebook right now. So you just want a one gallon, what we use is a one gallon water uh, jug or a one gallon milk jug. Half gallon works better because it gives you a better shape, but either one will work fine. So you're just going to take the corner here of your container and I draw a line so I know where I'm cutting at and you can, I'll show you how you can go about doing that. So you just kind of want to Go down, and I'm just kind of guess at it. There's no wrong way of doing this. It's a very earth-friendly project. So I'm just going to go over in the bottom there. So now I'm going to cut this out with an X-Acto knife. You want to have, uh, you want to do this, and not your your children. Just come down. You just want to rough cut it, and then you can come back and clean it up. Also scissors do work as well. A real good sharp pair of scissors is effective as well. Right, now we'll cut across the bottom here. Okay, so what we've got here is the basis of a shovel. So you can see you can trim it down, make it a little thinner. If you want to make the uh, bottom round edge, you can do that. Again, with the half gallon uh, milk container, you're going to have a much more structurally sound piece because it's going to be more uh, straight on the sides. Now, with the Facebook version of this, you can cut this portion out so you have an open handle, which I'm going to do, and we'll leave this one alone. Either way works. I'll show you the difference between the two here. Get this. Now with this here, with the open handle, it's a little more easier to grasp on for kids just learning how to grab onto a tool. And you can dig in there. And there is some structure to it. It's not going to collapse in on itself if you have, you know, you're not going to spade the yard with this. But it does work quite well with the open handle. And this, the closed handle, depending on how big your hand is, it also works well to maneuver the soil around or sand in the sandbox. Now, you could also take, this is a jug from a windshield washer fluid. Now, if you use this, you'd want to sanitize the inside with bleach in case they put them in their mouth. You could simply just cut the top ring or top portion cone off, and they could use it as a scoop as well. Some other items that work really well, even for you as the home gardener, is these coffee containers that have the handle on the back. Now, they come with a lid, they're square, so you just want to cut the top perimeter off to where you have a scoop. This works really well if you've got potting soil in a container and you want to scoop and fill pots up with instead of having to buy a shovel. Uh, they're, re they're earth friendly, you're, gonna, you're recycling it by using it again, so it's another way of going about recycling items in the house to 
use in the garden. And if you have a creative device that you've designed, we want to see about it. Send us a photograph at the Wisconsin, go to our webpage at the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com. At the bottom, there's a contact that will send you directly to our email. We want to see how creative you can be with the items that you've already created in your house. So if you have a unique one that you use in the garden, send us a photograph. So just some neat ways to recycle items that you have in your house to possibly get the young ones more involved in gardening. So we're going to dig some potatoes. Well, not here at the big garden, at the small garden, but we did do some test digging here on some of the plants that had already died, and we got a few results here. This was off about three plants, uh, not the quantity that we had hoped for, but I was encouraged to see that they were very large potatoes and not little potatoes the size of marbles because of the excessive drought that we've experienced. So if all the other uh, potatoes we dig up here will be the same size as those, I'll be relatively pleased. So now let's go up to the small garden and dig the little patch of potatoes that we've got planted that we planted real early this spring. So we're up in the small garden and we're going to dig up our potatoes that we planted early this spring. Now those, these, those, these potatoes may even have a little more life and growth into the tumblers. I'm going to go ahead and pull them out because I want to get some turnips and rutabagas in the ground here. Now you're typically you'd want to wait until your potato has completely died on the top is what I recommend and then we dig them up and see what we have but I'm going to go ahead and extract them out of the ground now again to get our fall planting in as quickly as possible. So I got to be careful because I'm limited amount of space here to dig these up without getting anything on our beans here or our eggplants and tomatoes, our eggplants and our um, pepper plants. So there's one. Just going to get that out of the way. Got to be careful so we don't cut into the potatoes when digging up. There's a nice one. Uh, garden fork works best, but we left that at the large garden. So we'll just use a, a shovel here. And the best way to do it is, oh, there's a nice one. Get underneath it and just kind of, you know, shake the dirt. As you can see, there's another potato. I'm just kind of mound it up here and then I'll fill the hole back in just to give me a, here's another one. Just to fill the hole back in whenever I get done. Sometimes the soil is loose enough here because we've watered quite a bit that you can kind of get your hand in there and fill for the potatoes so you don't damage any of them. Oh, there's one. All right, I'm gonna slide underneath and shake the soil up with some good potatoes here. Some Yukon Golds. There's another one there. Not that big, but everything counts. Well, that's a rock. It almost looked like a potato. Uh, here's one. Now we planted, I believe, five or six potatoes here. It's a nice one. And we've kept them watered more than we were able to at the other garden with this excessive drought. There's more there. And there might be a chance that there's some more potatoes in here somewhere that will come up next year like we did at the big garden. We had a handful of them that we had missed last fall. All right, that appears to be everything. So out of that little three foot section, we got, I would say at least a pound, maybe a little bit more. So just a little area can produce, on a poor year, a good quality quantity of potatoes. And even on a really moist year, as we kept these watered, you might even get more out. So always plant potatoes if you have the space available. It's a fun crop to grow and a fun crop to harvest. When harvesting your produce, whether it's tomatoes, onions, potatoes, there's a couple of devices you can take to the garden to make it a lot easier for you to process that harvest. Now, what I 
do not recommend is these plastic bags that we're trying to get rid of that you can go to any beach in the world and you'll find a ton of these and that's just not good for the environment but a couple of ways to go about harvesting is you can take crates like this now this is what nurseries will acquire uh, they get bulbs in it and sometimes if you buy a lot of produce from nurseries or, or bulbs or seeds then you might get these now we were fortunate enough to find five of these along the side of the road on junk day one morning and these are gold to the average home gardener so you want to find if you find them you want to hold on to them but if you're not if you don't have that device you could go with a reusable bag to take in the garden with you to put your produce or your onions in as, and then you can go in the house and process them that way another way is a little bag that your onions would come in if you bought at the store this was uh we had bulbs that we purchased that came in this netting mesh that works very well too and the benefit to a uh, device such as the netting or the crate is you throw the produce in there and the dirt sh uh, shakes through so you don't have to deal with a whole lot of dirt when you're in the kitchen and in the sink. If you have a milk crate, that'll work also well. Now with most milk crates, they're larger whole diameter milk crates. So to, to fix that, you can take old window screen and layer it in the, in the uh, sides and you can hot glue that to the crate or if you had hardware, uh, cloth that's a little half inch square metal uh, chicken wire type thing that you would get at the, your local home improvement store or even fine chicken wire anything like that to, so you can capture small things like cherry tomatoes or small potatoes and they won't roll and fall out so just a couple of ways to make your harvesting in your garden more easier when you get in the house Well, that's all the time we have. Hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Just planting the rest of our fall beets here where we harvested them earlier in the show. And the zucchini chips. Now that's a good way to get rid of a lot of zucchini when it's coming out of your ears in the middle of the summer. For Holly and I here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, reminding you, take a child gardening and start growing some memories. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter, see what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I Veg Gardener, G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the W-I Veg Gardener at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Rain Saucer have partnered together. For more information on how you can purchase your own Rain Saucer, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and on the right-hand side of the page, click on Rain Saucer Information.